Hey everybody, welcome into Northern Life and happy Friday to you. I'm Briggs here with Hunter and special guest host Heidi Stang. Let's go. Hi Heidi, yeah, she's going in for Ryan today. How's it going? Good, I'm happy to be here, so excited. We're happy to have you too. We miss Ryan of course, but he is enjoying some much deserved time off. I don't think he's really taken a day off since we've started this show. No! He works too hard. He's an animal is what he is. He's got to settle down a little he bit, you know? He is dedicated to Northern Life. He wouldn't miss it, but we're happy for him for taking a little time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Actually, this is your first show that you produced for Northern Life, correct? So I know. I almost didn't want to tell the viewers. I hope they can <laughs> tell the difference toy. between a Ryan show and a Briggs show. Hopefully, <laughs> I did Ryan proud today, but I guess we'll see. Looking at the show beforehand, I thought it looked really good. Ooh. So I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of stuff coming up on today's show. Heidi, you just took some time off last week for a super fun adventure on the south shore of Lake Superior. She's here to tell us all about that as she went hunting for something that is highly coveted in our area around here. Super cool, Heidi. Yeah, absolutely. And we're getting closer and closer to summer. So we're looking ahead to what we're most excited for this summer. Could be some trips we want to take or just exciting weekend plans here in the Northland. We're going to share all of that in just a few minutes. But first, let's get into some talkers, huh? It's Friday. The first one is probably not what you're expecting. Somehow, some way, Hunter and Briggs here both have stories to share about a porcupine. Yeah. Briggs, we'll start with you. I We were talking about this the other day, and I was telling my story, and Hunter's like, I have a story about the porcupine and I was like well we have to talk about it on the show because Naturally. I imagine there must be more people across the Northland who have yeah. porcupine stories so uh, let's show this video that my mother took the other day uh, of a, that's a porcupine in a tree he's climbing that tree a very unsturdy branch yeah, he's pretty far out there right he now he is it looks like it could have been a monkey oh my God. right she looked in the telescope that they have and yeah. she confirmed definitely a porcupine because she mm -hmm. could see the little spikes, you know, coming out of it, not a monkey that maybe escaped from the zoo. Yeah. But isn't that wild? That's crazy. He's brave. That's a little far out on the branch. Oh, Seriously. So. What the heck was he doing? Like, there's not even any, like, leaves, leaves. to eat? I don't Is know. that what they eat? Do they eat leaves or branches no or something bark? like that? Bark? Is hungry enough? Yeah. I think they eat bark. That makes yeah, sense. That or branches. Mm -hmm. uh, and my story is not very scary, but yours <laughs> it was actually a, terrifying. It was a little scary. Your story <laughs> reminded me of a story that happened about three years ago. I was in my deer stand hunting, and this porcupine came underneath my deer stand. You can see my ladder right there, oh, and gosh. there's the oh. porcupine. And it climbed up an adjacent tree <laughs> right in front of me. Look how close it is to me. I'm like, what are you going to do? I thought I had to wrestle it to the ground. I thought it was go time almost mean that porcupine and uh, also the rumor is what I what I thought at that time was that they can shoot their quills at you oh. but that's not true as far as I know oh. I don't think that's true but back then I'm like is he gonna shoot his quills at me do I have to like I thought I was gonna right. have to tackle this thing mm -hmm. coming at me still walking at me out on the on the tree branch being all brave and stuff like this is my house man yeah. I mean, what are you doing here <laughs> to keep your four paws on the ground please <laughs> I know my dad at home is gonna be watching this and have the exact same story about a porcupine really? and seriously and stand. Yep. Oh <laughs> did he gosh. get any quills he didn't know but just enough. the tree away you're kind of like you stay in your tree yes. I'll stay in my tree and we'll we'll be cool out here together respect our spaces <laughs> yep. that's what you gotta do man oh man well from <laughs> land creatures to sea creatures an oklahoma boy had dreamed of owning an octopus since he was two years old that's kind of crazy uh, but when his dream finally became a reality he suddenly ended up with 50 of them Whoa. nine year old cal <laughs> clifford named his new pet terrence but within weeks they found out he was actually a she and terrence now terry started laying <laughs> eggs suddenly one octopus had become become 50 five zero babies that's insane the babies are now destined for educational institutions according to the american veterinary medical association octopuses generally live between one and five years so luckily uh, this family didn't have to keep all 50 because that's like a big commitment for maybe five years of i think octopus. so that's where crazy. did they find you know an octopus to buy first of all second of all accidentally a pregnant one. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, Talk with whoa. the manager of the store before they bought it. They're like, eh, no, just give it to them, you know? Like, what? I would have been dumbfounded. Yes. And then and then to be the parents, too, and just watching this continue to happen and counting <laughs> all these times. little ones. Like, how disappointing for that little boy. <laughs> Good parents for getting him, you know, his dream, what he wanted, but they got a little more than they wanted. Yeah. Also, I didn't know, like you said, I didn't know you could buy an octopus, an octopus. Yeah. and just have it in a fish tank in your house. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's probably pretty regular. Well, switching gears, if you've got a big trip coming up this summer, new federal rules say air travelers deserve cash refunds, not just vouchers or travel credits. When flights are delayed or canceled, passengers will now receive automatic cash.
cash refunds if a domestic flight is delayed by more than three hours. The same applies to international flights that are more than six hours behind schedule. I think, you know, three hours for a domestic flight to get a full read, that's not bad. No. Only three hours? Uh, chances are your flight might be delayed that much, yeah. honestly. Like, that's not that rare of a yeah, time frame, slight. I would say. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever done the thing where they ask for people to volunteer to get off the plane and then you get, like, a voucher or I've some money for that? Mm -hmm. I've never done it myself either because I've always been, like, with my whole family. Yes. You yeah. Know, and that's been happening. But if I were ever alone and they were like, $1,000 <laughs> to the first person to step off the plane, I'd be like, I'd me. Be <laughs> Gosh. It, it got up to like, I think it was almost two grand and no one was raising their hand and I never, I was, I should have done it, but I'm like, I want to get out of here. I yeah. just want to leave. But We always was, do the thing for like bags, like your check bag, oh. where they're like, oh, we have too many for the overhead bins. Does anyone want to check theirs? We've signed up for that. We're like, take them away. <laughs> That's smart too. We're not going to get up and get them on the plane anyway. So. Yeah. Well, I kind of like that kind of being held accountable for the delays and stuff. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, it just feels like you're always at the mercy of these airlines, whatever's going to mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. And it just makes traveling a nightmare. So hopefully maybe True. they start to, I don't know, figure stuff out, make a better way to not have all those delays all the time. Right. And then to just get cash too from the ticket counter yes. <laughs> right yeah. there and be like, all right, I'm going to go Perfect. get some lunch now. One, yeah. two. <laughs> yep. uh, well, speaking of refunds, some Minnesota brides say they're not getting any money back after their wedding Before venue abruptly announced its do. closure it's this gorgeous. week. Circle B and Isanti sent out an email to couples who booked with them saying they were closing immediately due to financial issues. One bride was just 12 days away from her wedding when she heard the news and is now scrambling to find somewhere to host her special day, not to mention trying to get $11,000 she Gosh, lost. That's I know. so crazy. So, so sad. Well, hey, coming up after the break, what are you looking forward to this summer? We're going to share our top five things we can't wait for after the break. Welcome back, everybody. So many of us have our sights set on summer already, including us here on Northern Life, I would say. So we wanted to focus this top five Friday list on what we're most, most looking forward to in this new season. Could be maybe an event or an activity. So Hunter, we're going to start with you. Yeah, I think my first number one thing, last summer I did this a lot. I got out and I fished a lot on my, right. on my boat, was able to get out like multiple days a week. It was so much fun. So I think that's the number one thing is getting out on the boat, hanging out no matter what on the lake and on I don't know the river. I don't know if I really ever go on a river or anything. But <laughs> do you fish on, on the on, lake that you live on? Yes, on oh, the, cool. yeah, the lake nice. I live on, which is super cool. A lot of northerns, uh, not Ooh. so many walleyes or things like that. Okay. But it's just a blast. And just getting out there, not even fishing, you know, yeah, just right. touring around and waving at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cool. best. I love that boat wave yes. that you do <laughs> when people come by. Hey. Yep. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, number two on my list here, vacation. I've got a Ooh. couple of vacations, week-long vacations coming oh, up. Oh wow! Yeah, I know, right? Okay. One's in June, a staycation. At my at my house, nice. And then ones in July, we're going camping with the family on fun. July fourth. So it's going to oh, be a lot fun. of fun. Cool. Where, oh do you, where do you guys go? Uh, so that's going to be up in Ely, and nice. we've got a gig nice. at the end of our vacation week. I think it's the week after the fourth. So and it's in Ely. So fun. we're going to camp up in Ely and then go to the gig right afterwards. So Aww. such a great time. That's a rock star lifestyle. Planning around <laughs> your gigs, but making it a vacation. Heck yeah, that's, the right way to do it. that's what we like to do. It's a lot of fun out there. So number three on my list here, swimming. Of course, I love swimming in lakes. I love swimming in any body of water. I've always loved swimming. So when it gets warm enough to where you can swim or tube, have you two ever tried tubing before? Oh yeah, like either, behind the boat or on down the river? Either, either. Okay, okay. Oh yeah. Because they're both. I've never actually done it down a river because I bet mm -hmm. that's a ton of fun. Yeah. But like tubing behind a boat is just one of the funnest things on the planet. Yeah. Depending who's driving. Yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> I think there's some fun tubing that can be done on the Namakagan River right. in Wisconsin. I've never done it, but I've heard a lot about it. And I've heard uh, even some bachelorette parties, bachelor parties go do that yeah. sort of thing. And it's just like perfect for a big group to just yeah. float down the river for a while. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Maybe I'll have to do that this summer. Yeah. That sounds like a blast. Number four, grilling outdoors, getting outside, grilling any hamburgers or steaks or even, uh, I don't know, shish kebabs. Is that a thing that people grill? <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Probably. Every shrimp, I don't know, but it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. That's one of my favorite things also is grilling outdoors. And of course, number five, when it gets beautiful outside, those outdoor games gigs are so much fun, yeah. right? At sunset, it's just starting to cool off outside. Mm -hmm. Everybody's having fun. Sometimes bugs, but you got it. You just spray up and you're all good sure. to go. Sure. About what time of year do you guys normally start doing outdoor gigs? Oh, uh, that's probably, I mean, as soon as May. We've done them in oh, April wow. too before, oh, but it, if it's nice out, we'll play in May or June, right. especially early June, we'll start to really gig outdoors. I remember once um, we were at uh, the Breeze Inn yep. and you played in the winter. It was cold outside, wasn't it? Wasn't there snow? Yes, we played outside in the winter before and our oh, hands fun. are freezing, but <laughs> it's worth it. 
with it. It's a lot of fun, seriously. So, uh, Heidi, I believe you're next. I'm next. Okay, so my top five. Number one here, I put the 4th of July in Annandale. I'm from Annandale, Minnesota. It's down uh, central Minnesota. It is my favorite place to be. The 4th of July is like our town thing. They have the carnival, cool. the parade, over 100 units in the parade. They do these huge fireworks um, at dusk. They have the fabulous armadillo. Sorry, Hunter. What I is wish that? the band could oh, be there. A band. It's a band. Okay. So it's a cover awesome. band. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, an armadillo? Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. 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 Chris Hockey's cool. Chris Hockey's, Chris Hockey's um, their awesome. lead singer. So yeah, totally, totally pumped for that. That's just cool. my favorite day. Don't like. your mom, don't you and your mom help at like a breakfast too? We do. We volunteer. Yeah. So we feed breakfast before the parade. My mom does cool. a car wash the week before. It's all volunteers for our um, ambassador scholarship program. So we just love the 4th of July in Annandale. <laughs> okay. Love it. Um, yeah, but other summer things I'm looking forward to, beach days here in Duluth. Park Point Ooh, cannot yes. go wrong. Um, we love a wave day, going swimming in the big waves when it's safe to do so. <laughs> um, but also just laying on the beach when it's warm and the sand's hot. Um, I put camping on the list. I'm really, really hoping to make it out to the Porcupine Mountains this Ooh, summer fine. in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So that's on the list Hopefully of not things I'm looking forward to. not coming too close to any porcupines. <laughs> no, we're done with the porcupine part, just the mountain okay. part. Okay, <laughs> I like that. That's good, that's just good. Just the mountain part. Um, but the last two I put sunny rock hunting which I know we're going to talk about rock hunting yes. a little more later um, but also grandma's half marathon Briggs you've <gasps> run the full and the half before I'm taking on the half this summer cool. I'm very nervous and it's I'm your first so time yeah. first half the longest I've ran is three miles so it's okay you've got, got so much time. Some time to get ready so much time but how is the training going though has it been fun going. at least yeah it's okay. fun I love the lake walk <laughs> I got new shoes it's just it's so fun you feel so good afterwards which sounds crazy if you don't really like running but you do you just feel better afterwards and I've gone and cheered you on and Kendall before at the half and it's just such a fun environment that I was like, well, I want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> this looks so much fun. So I'm really, really excited. I think that. a lot of the spectators, you know, they're like, I'm, I'm setting myself that goal for next year. I'm yeah. going to run this race. So, so cool yep. yeah. that you did that. <laughs> Uh, and I think I've got my list to share next. here. So let's see. I also said 4th of July. It's my favorite holiday of all. Love it. Um, no matter what I'm doing, always a fun time. Even if it's in the middle of the week, I don't care. Um, a trip to Eagle River, Wisconsin. That's where my husband's from and his family lives. They have a wonderful chain of lakes. We get out on the boat, um, get to, you know, go around for all day. Yeah. It's just a really fun time. And the dogs love to come on the boat, too. Uh, number three, I think I said go to the beach, maybe. Did oh, I yeah. say go to the beach, Seth? Well, let's save my list here again. There, Weekends nice. at the beach, Park Point. <laughs> We love to see it. Concerts outside, maybe the Northwoods Band or anything at Bayfront. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, so I'm gonna have to get tickets to a few of those, um, especially the Trampled by Turtles one at Bayfront. That's I your favorite one every year. Love that. I go Mem every year. Yep. And Hairball, right? Yes. Hairball. Yep. I yep. try to go every year. Um, my last one. I can't remember what I put. And now my phone with the list. Outdoor workouts. I love working out in the sun. It's lovely. Really cool. Yeah. Coming up after the break, how are you gonna dive into her favorite hobby? Happy Friday, folks, and welcome back to Northern Life. Heidi here has a passion for a very Northland hobby. We're excited to learn all about it. Last week, you took some time off with your family. I didn't know these kinds of rocks existed before you started working here, Heidi. Yeah. And tell us all about your hobby. It's super cool. Yeah, so we spent Friday on the North Shore, Saturday on the South Shore. Um, I actually was lucky enough to do a story last year. These are called Uperlites, so I brought my blacklight so cool. flashlight. Um, the pictures will help do it justice, but they look like pretty old, plain, boring rocks until you shine them under a UV flashlight and they light up orange. And they just, they glow. And it's so, so cool. fun to look for. There's me, my parents, my boyfriend Ian, there's my mom and dad. Cute. <laughs> they love it. My dad bought me a flashlight for Christmas when I was in high school. And it's just, we never got to go. We never could figure out where you could find them until we figured out Ironwood, Michigan. It's got Tons of them. Yeah. That's the place to be. That's the place. I mean, I was like, Dad, they're called Uperlites for the Upper Peninsula. Uh -huh. <laughs> I bet that's where we have to go. <laughs> got so it. We ding, ding, ding. Go. <laughs> so this so so last weekend we went. Yeah. So how do you search for them? Obviously, it's it looks like it's nighttime it yeah. in these night. photos, right? <laughs> Thank you, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> we have the lights down for a reason yes. here because Heidi's going to show so, us what these rocks I know. look like. I hope you'll be able to tell on screen with my aiming. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. See the orange there? Weird. That's incredible. How it kind of lights up a little bit. Do you yeah. know what property makes Perfect. it do that? Um, it's wow. something with, when a rock forms, it doesn't form normal quartz. It instead forms a different, this one's really wow. bright, there you go. It instead forms a different mineral that lights up 
uh, orange under okay. the glow of a UV flashlight. So um, a man was out in the Upper Peninsula and he was looking for something else. You can also use black lights to find like crayfish yeah. or fossils. Okay. This one's a fossil, this big guy here. You can cool. see how it like lights up, lights up white like that. No way. <laughs> um, so. That is so cool. He was probably out fossil hunting, saw the glow, saw yeah. the orange instead, um, and realized this is something unique, this is something different, but we've got it here. Um, according That's to incredible. this field guide that I have, it's from one deposit in Canada and it washed down into the Upper Peninsula, so that's why you can find them there. Oh wow. But, and so you go out kind of at dusk and it's like, everyone's just out there with these flashlights just walking <laughs> along and you'd think like it would just light up, but sometimes you have to be right on top of it or sometimes you can see from a distance and then you get closer and you're like, oh, like where did that one go? Yeah. So. And, and I mean, you found a lot of them. Yeah, this, <laughs> Clearly, was, this was our bag one bag. Full. I won't give away exactly where we went, <laughs> just that we were in the upper peninsula. Like a good but, uh, fisher, <laughs> like a good angler as yes. well. Doesn't tell their secrets. A uh, good Uper light hunter doesn't yes. <laughs> as well. So this is just a UV flashlight, right? Yep, you want okay. um, like a certain strength um, wavelength. Some wavelengths work better than others just because of the power and the intensity of them. Hmm. Um, but you can find other things. So I brought this little jar. Um, um, this is uranium glass, so oh, I know a lot of people like green. looking for sea glass, so um, but under a UV flashlight here, it turns green. Maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Yeah, I um, think you can. Yeah. But, so people probably have that at home and they have no idea. Without a black light flashlight, you would never know that you've got uranium glass huh. sitting at home. That so. is so cool. <laughs> How many times have you done this with your family where you take vacations and you go up? We've gone south, twice now. Gone twice. To the South Shore. Oh, yep, we went once in September and then we went this spring because we were like, oh, like, it was all wavy last week. People probably haven't been out over the winter. <laughs> There'll be fresh rocks just for us. <laughs> were there a bunch of people out searching at the same time so as you? So funny. So many people out oh, there. Lots of, and it, you, you'll walk by and they'll be like, oh, are you finding anything? And they're like, no, not really. And you're like, I know that you are. I, just, I know you're not telling me. They're trying to bluff you. Like yeah, trying to right. Get a I know. I think my dad. He sent me an email yesterday. He bought a rock tumbler. So oh. I mean, there's debate whether to tumble or not to tumble. But they, no matter what, they're just fun to look at. It's a fun story. It's a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. So. Yeah. You <laughs> gave your dad also a really cool frame. We don't have much time left on the block, but a cool frame made of these rocks. Yeah, for I sure did. For, yep, for Christmas. So awesome. <laughs> my gosh. Coming up, we'll take a look at what's coming up next of Northern Life. Welcome back, everybody. Coming up on Monday, we have a whole lot of fun planned as we're going to take you on to Duluth's Lakeside neighborhood, where we all learned a new lifetime skill, knitting. And we that was just a ton of fun. Big thanks to the folks at Yarn Harbor for showing us beginners some tips and tricks. We're excited to show you how they can help you dive into the craft for the first time or perfect your skills. Now, Briggs, I know you <laughs> dove in for the first time, but now you have to perfect your skills. You've been I doing it so been. much. I have been at home. I, I sit down oh, and watch really? TV. I do some knitting. I'm not that good. Uh, but I will say my product, whatever it may be in the end, it might just be a, a long scarf? piece of something. Yeah. Uh, it's coming along. You, it's looked, coming along. you looked intense there. You were locked in. Thank you. I, my, my concentration was absolutely <laughs> dialed in. And a huge thank you here to Heidi for joining yes. us today as our special guest. While Ryan takes some much needed time off, his vacation is going to continue Monday, but we'll be lucky enough to welcome sports anchor Alexis Bass back to the Northern Life studio. Nice. We're excited to ask her all about her thoughts on the Vikings and Packers picks in the NFL draft. And and what's new in her world overall. So it'll be a fun conversation. All of that is coming up on Monday. So it's been a fun week. Happy it's the weekend, though. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes, it's always good when the weekend comes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here next week. Find some time to throw a line or just head outside to unwind. That's the life in the great north woods Hike or bike, whatever you like Get out in the day, enjoy the night Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods Yeah, this is northern life